Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to take a look at a brand new album uh, released just a few weeks back. It's the latest one by Blossoms. So yeah, I'll just be doing the usual thing in this video, giving a bit of background information about the album, then showing you my vinyl copy of it here, and then looking at each of the album songs in detail. So this was the Stockport band's third album, and they'd um, already now established as one of the most popular like indie bands like off like recent years, um, like sort of like playing live, like touring like the like touring like they're like very very popular and very much this album was kind of made using the same kind of process as their last two working with producer James Skelly but now that they were a bit more used to like the songwriting process and like recording and like we're given more time like to sort of like rehearse like and develop arrangements like after having like success with their last two albums. Now recent years they have been incredibly productive because apparently like they've um, recorded around uh, 25 um, songs like in total like during like the sessions like for this album like only 10 like make it on to the album Album, like and like they are considered releasing sort of three mini albums this year like whether like they seem to like have decided against that but certainly they seem to be like have been like very like productive and um productive recently and very much like on this record they continue to sort of show like their like sort of like strong like influences like of like 70s pop like sort of like the bombast like of ELO but also kind of like um, McCartney's like melodic touches as well and personally for songwriter and singer Tom Odgun like the past few years like I've been quite a happy quite a fulfilling time like he's he's been busy like renovating like his house like with like his girlfriends so like so like he was like listening to like a lot of like records like when like he was like doing this like the three like which he said like stood out to him like was Talking Heads and um, Stop Making Sense, U2's The Joshua Tree and Primal Scream's Screamadelica. So certainly like all like, these albums kind of like amalgamated like into like sort of like Blossom's music on this one. And now so far the album has been getting a really great critical reception like most reviews like are like four like if not five stars like to it and it's definitely seen like as like a natural progression like for the band like rather than like so like a commercial cash in because it is a it's probably a bit more commercial sounding than some of like their last couple like of albums and um, like but like but like it's still staying true to like themselves in terms of success the charts aren't quite yet released and um, like when like I'm like filming this although like in like the midweek update it is due to reach uh, number one so hopefully like it stays there as for singles though uh, blossoms unfortunately don't tend to do too well like on the singles charts and like certainly like, i don't think any of the singles your girlfriend or the keeper like even actually charted which is a real shame because again they're all like really great like really like worthy songs so i will try to show you my final copy of it here now this is just the standard version i don't even think that there was a deluxe version because i think for like the last two there was a deluxe version which had a bonus disc of like an acoustic version of the album which is really really like enjoyable like we've got the one for cool like you up there How, however for this one as far as i'm aware they didn't like they didn't bother to put like the acoustic version out like on vinyl like it's exclusive to cds and streaming only which is a bit of a shame but there's a the cover really like the cover i'd say it's probably one of like the best covers like which like, they've done there's the back of it there and the gatefold looks really nice uh, just a nice picture of them and the, and as usual like with the blossoms album albums you do get a really nice booklet which um not many records these days come with but it is nice that they do provide it i like this sort of like this photo shoot it's kind of it's, it's kind of like got this sort of like continuity going through they're all kind of wearing like the same clothes same kind of setting but it just looks nice again it's a bit like a retro touch to sort of like and um, the excess like of like 70s albums packaging but yeah they've got credits on the back so that's really nice you've got a printed inner sleeve which again just has picture up pictures of them on it so again really 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 nicely designed album and the label itself just looks like that so yeah that's the vinyl record looked at okay so and i'll go over each of the album songs so there's uh, 10 tracks in total it's it's certainly not the longest album like in the world and um, like but yeah like um but like yeah like i'll score each each of the tracks out of 10 and then uh, use those scores to give us a overall percentage marking for the album off in absolutely fine form with if you think this is real life which yeah just like kicks off the album so well it's got a really sort of great sort of blasting like synth from it. it gives it a real sort of like retro like 80s feeling to it it's a really catchy song again as usual like the blossoms great production value overall just a really 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 great opener we'll give it a 9 out of 10 and now your girlfriend is ringing in my ears again Next up is uh, Your Girlfriend, which is a song which has been released for a little while now. I think it came out last summer, and it is just a really catchy little pop song. This with really, I, I think, I think, I think like quite sort of like funny lyrics on it, kind of about falling for like a mate's girlfriend, in, and, and like, and like a sort of like he 
get mixed a lot about little like observations about sort of like um like saying like um like we've just like signed the lease like on like the flat like and like stuff like that and um, like yeah like it's just it's, it's really good and, and again i like how it tells a story through the lyrics it's not repetitive like although it although it is sort of verse chorus structured the chorus is kind of different like every time like, which i do really really like and like yeah like was apparently like inspired like, by like an online blog like which like Ogden read like and sort of like and like sort of like the lyrics kind of like wrote themselves and yeah like i said it was a great single released last summer but it didn't do anything like on like the charts which is a real shame because it is a, a yeah really fantastic song and was one of my favorite songs from last year with The Keeper, which was the other single released uh, from the album. And this is a kind of very different sound like, for Blossoms. It's kind of more sort of like rootsy sounds like on this one here. Like this sort of like, it's a kind of gospel like influence one, this one here. Again, you've got a really lively like piano part to it. It's just very exuberant and very sort of like full of life. Uh, like the piano playing like on it like, was taken from like the like original demo, like which was just done using like a rather cheap like upright piano, like, but it sounded so good that like, when like, we tried like more expensive like equipment, it just didn't quite have the right effect on it and like yeah like you can kind of sense on this track they may be trying to make inroads like into like the US because I don't really know like how popular like or like otherwise they are like in like America but this song like with kind of like the video to it like being set like in I think New York and the kind of like having like so like the gospel backing singers gives it a very um, American kind of feeling to it but it doesn't sound forced at all like in any way it's still it's still very it's still got it's still got Blossom's kind of trademark and um, trademark like signatures like on it and um, like so yeah the keeper another really good track another song which I would give a 10 out of 10 to. They're called My Swimming Brain, and this was apparently the first song they, the first song they wrote for the album, and it has a really nice sort of like chilled out, like psychedelic mood to it. Kind of reminds me a bit of like some of like Taming Parlors, like sort of stuff. Begins like with a quite a quiet like introduction, but then it develops. You got a really pleasing groove to it, nice sort of spacey harmonies like on that on like the song. I, I would say though, it's maybe not quite as instantly memorable, like or like instantly like a standout um like track like compared to like the first three songs, and like it maybe at first listen comes across like as a tad fillery but on like repeated listens is certainly growing on me this track so yeah my swimming brain i would give a eight out of ten to if i'm trying why should i give you a Closing off side one, we get a song, uh, Sunday Was A Friend Of Mine, which is a kind of funky one, this one here. It reminds me kind of a lot of like Talking Heads kind of stuff with a kind of like pulsating bass line. Like whether like bassist like Charlie Salt, like who is a great, great bass player, like said that like the actual like influence like on this was uh, Ross Stewart's song, like Do You Think I'm Sexy? Um, like, and like, yeah, like it is again, just got such a funky feeling to it. Lyrically though, it's kind of about a breakup. It's about sort of like feeling sad. Like sort of like he sings like kind of like Sunday was a friend of mine, Sunday, like the day, like he would be spending like time like time like with like the skill like it's kind of now like in like the past like and like now he's sort of like lonely like in that so yeah it is a good song like again it's a good title and um, title line maybe again in terms of its music it's not quite as memorable as some of the others like on the album that like, doesn't kind of stick doesn't kind of stick in your head as much but it is still really really good and another grower so yeah that one would get an 8 out of 10. Next one up, which opens up side two, is called Oh No, I Think I'm In Love, um, which is, yeah, a really upbeat track, this one. It's, it, 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 like, again, kind of continues like the same sort of moods, like, off, like, the last one, very upbeat, very kind of disco -y, this one, like, almost. Very much a kind of dance rock style blossoms, like, I've really mastered. And it reminds me a bit of, like, Apple, like, in, like, some ways, this one, yeah, like, kind of, like, especially, like, the instrumental breakdown, like, breakdown, like, with a really nice acoustic guitar solo. And, yeah, it just keeps the pace, like, interesting, like, this one, yeah, like, it's not all kind of, like, super upbeat. It kind of, like, goes down a bit, like, a lot, down a bit, like, and then, like, rises up, like, the mood changes in it work really well. So, yeah, I would give that one um, also an 8 out of 10, another really good track. Romance. Next one up is called Romance, which is a, a kind of like love song, this one here. And I would say maybe like at this point on the album, these kind of lyrics are getting a little bit old and a bit cheesy maybe. But it was kind of like the concept like of the album, like they're all kind of like the songs about relationships at like different stages, like off like relationships and that. Now I've read that like this one was actually like inspired like by the way that Morrissey like used to write, like in terms of like he like Ogden bought a like Sheila Delaney book. And like found like this phrase like in it, which is something what like Morrissey like 
like used to do like a lot like he quoted like from like various writers like throughout like his time um, and I'm like yeah this one um it is a good song I, I don't I don't I don't I don't think it quite compares to like some like the Smiths track so like but it is a breezy song it's only a nice 12 string work on it um so yeah I can't be too harsh like on it it's just kind of like at this point like kind of like these like lyrics um like about it being like a love or maybe get or maybe get like a little bit tedious like on the album but again I can't be too harsh on it it is a good song at the end of the day I, I, I would still give it a 7 out of 10 all in my vacant days and then the next one up is called my vacant days um which is the ballad on the album and it very much sort of stands out like on the record this because it's a nice change of pace like after the kind of disco and pop like off pop like off like the previous few songs this one is kind of just a like kind of like reaching like for like you reaching like for like your guitar kind of song kind of just like singing like alone and like yeah it's got really nice like lyrics on it great melody great like acoustic like hook like on it as well like it's it is just a really well written song and i would give it a nine out of ten Falling for someone. What could be my personal favourite on the album? It's called Falling for Someone, and kind of a bit sort of like contradictory, like to what I said about like romance. Again, this is another kind of like love song, like a kind of about, like kind of about basically just like falling in love, like with someone. And again, you've got really strong 80s vibes like coming through the production. I hear a bit of like Godly and Krems cry like on this one, but also uh, Lloyd Cole's Cut Me Down. Like I'm not sure, like it's it, it just it just it just kind of like, reminds me like of like those like kind of songs. I like the sort of like the tension like in like the verse. Like at the verse again, like so, like the crashing like acoustic guitars, like what come in like every now and again. It's just yeah, exceptionally produced, great filtered backing vocals, and is possibly my favourite on the album. Like it's not been like a single yet. It's not one which I hear many people single it out like for praise, but um, yeah, I think it is like as perfect as this album gets. And um, yeah, we'll give it a ten out of ten. at the album closer which is called like gravity and this is probably the most experimental most sort of like a sprawling track on the album kind of starts it's, it's kind of a more more kind of moody song this one a more kind of like moody like electronic vibe like down like the rest like of the album like but i could do really i do really like the chorus line it goes like we've run around this time for days now and um, i'm in these foolish loving spaces in my mind and yeah, it's probably like the most sort of like guitar traditional guitar rock song like on the album but then it kind of goes in a very different direction like for like the fade out with a kind of murky kind of sound collage um like they've said that like they were inspired like by like fellow like mancunian band uh, 10cc like their song i'm not in love like in love like with like the very like infernal kind of backing vocals like on it like it does have like that sort of flavor to it it just sort of like drifts away this song like into like the distance like which i really like i think it closes off the album like yeah like really well so yeah um like gravity um would get a nine out of ten from me okay so overall this album would score 88 percent which is a cracking score i do think this is possibly their best album today i mean like i do need to revisit like the other two but certainly i would say this one has has probably like, the most variety like in terms of like, music from Prob probably like og organs like and um, most memorable like melodies like today like his best lyrics so yeah like, i would say this is definitely like their best album and um, their best album like they've done i mean it's possibly a bit more pop driven than than some of like their like original fans like were maybe hoping for but i like how it takes influence like from a range of good quality music like from like the 70s and 80s and then they just kind of wrap it up like in like hooky tunes and like yeah like just really quality song craft and in this kind of day and age of like people being like a bit like down and dour, like kind of like writing like angry, like and like politically charged music, uh album which is like as upbeat and as kind of like escapist like as this, like really comes like as like a breath of uh, like fresh air, like I would say. And yeah, they have apparently like already, like I said, like got like um, the next album pretty much like in the can. So whether like we'll see it like some point later this year, I don't really know. But yeah, like they are um, really like at that, like, really like I would say like at like the top of the game right now. Blossoms, a great band to check out like if like you're not too familiar with them. So yeah, and um, that's been my review of their Foolish Loving Spaces. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.